Hello, my Penguins fan, and welcome. welcome back to the F1 Roundup. Uh, today we're going through the Bahrain Grand Prix, the first week of the new Formula One season. And did it live up to the hype? No, um, depends who you support. For me, disastrous weekend. But we'll start off with, we'll go through the practice results. So for practice one, it was Fernando Alonso in his Aston Martin set the fastest lap ahead of the two Red Bulls, and Mercedes and Ferrari, of Lewis Hamilton, and then Ferrari, Charles Leclerc. To see Fernando Alonso up there, it is fantastic. Finally, the man has made a good career move from moving from Alpine to Aston Martin. Seb Vettel, look away. Fantastic result for the Spaniard in practice, in third practice. And he also topped second practice. And he was second in the first practice. What a result that was for Aston Martin. It shows that they've got the pace. Um, bad news, though, if you're McLaren or Ferrari. Not a good weekend for them. But we won't dwell on practice. It's practice. It doesn't really matter. You don't get points for your practice. But let's go through quali. Qualification. So we'll go through Q1. The cars knocked out in Q1 were Pierre Gasly in his Alpine. Nick De Vries in the AlphaTauri. Oscar Piastri on debut in his McLaren, Kevin Magnussen in his Haas, Logan Sargent in the Williams, Alex Albon in his Williams, who was knocked out despite, sorry, Logan Sargent was knocked out despite setting the same time as Lando Norris, but Lando set it earlier on in the session. So, overall, that's sort of what we expected. We expect to see the Williams down there, they always are Haas down there. Alpha Tauri. I was gutted to see Piastri and Gasly go out Q1. I think for Gasly particularly to qualify 20th. I didn't actually watch qualification myself, but I've already had some issues somewhere. But he more than made up for it in the race. But Hassan Williams being down there, not a shock. Alpha Tauri being in the lower to midfield, once again, not a particularly big shock. To see Oscar Piastri go out Q1, uh, knowing what we know now, not a shock, but knowing. But at the time, I was thinking, oh, oh dear, oh dear, that's not good. That's a bit of a problem. So, yeah, not great. So, we'll move on to Q2. The cars that went out in Q2 were Albon, Tsunoda, Zhou Guan Yu, Valdelia Bottas, and Lando Norris. Uh, again, that's about what we expected to see, and in that order, to see Lando come 11th in quali. That's fantastic. Um, see the two Alfa Romeos, about where we expect him. Potentially could have seen him a bit higher. Um, but yeah, and to see Yuki go out there. And then the top 10 was Nico Hülgenberg. 10th, that's a great result in the house. I don't think they're going to be too disheartened by their weekend. I think they're going to be quite happy. Ocon, who came 9th, unless we'll, we'll talk about Esteban. Lance Stroll with his broken wrists, his broken toe. 8th, fantastic result. Then the two Mercedes of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton in 7th and 6th with Lewis 7th, George 6th. Yeah, I think the less we've said about them this weekend, the better they'll be going away a bit disheartened, I think. Then Fernando did so well in practice, sort of like slip and quali, and was, but he was a good six tenth seconds off the pole. But hey ho. The two Ferraris who did very, very well in quali, I think that's about where we expect to see him. Then, of course, Checo Perez, Max Verstappen. The race. Um, so we'll start off with going through the full 20, and we'll go through what happened. Oscar Piastri, Charles Leclerc and Esteban Ocon all did not finish. Piastri with an electrical issue, Charles Leclerc, which we believe might be an engine problem, and Esteban Ocon, I think they were just reserving their day because he got 30-something for five seconds worth of penalties. He got a penalty for not being in the grid box correctly. Rookie error, Esteban, you should know better. Then a penalty for not serving that penalty correctly. Whoopsie-daisies. And then a penalty for speeding in the pit lane when serving another penalty. Lots of penalties for him. However, only the one with his team, that, you know, not serving as penalty correctly, that was his team, so not Esteban. But the pit lane and being in the spot, wrong spot, that's on him. Silly Billy. Uh, Charles Leclerc, miserable day. Didn't quite have the pace of the Red Bulls, and then obviously had that injured issue on lap 30. Nine. We weren't even into 40 laps into a season, and the season was ruined for Charles, because you only get two of those components. And he replaced one of them in Park Ferme because of a potential engine failure. <laughs> it's going to be a long season. Anyway, 17th was Lando Norris, who did a grand total of six pit stops because he had air problem and we kept having to refill his engine with air. 
I think that sums up McLaren's weekend. Horrific weekend for them. Joe Guan Yu, um, Nico Walkenberg, Nick DeVries, Kevin Magnus, and Logan Sargent. Uh, so Joe came 16th. Uh, Joe Guan Yu came 16th. Nico Walkenberg 15th. Nick DeVries 14th. Magnus 13th. Logan Sargent on debut 12th. Great result for a rookie. Yuki Snowden 11th. Alex Albon and the Williams in 10th. Great result. Great performance. But even better performance come from Pierre Gasly, who went from 20th to 9th. What a performance. Um, did a very, very good job. Uh, kept the pace. Was not slow uh, by any means. Then the Valtteri Bottas with a fantastic start, um, who came 8th. George Russell came 7th. Not a good day at the office for him. Just sort of struggled a bit. Never really got going. Never really seemed a threat. Couldn't get past Lewis. Um, yeah, he'll be disappointed. Lance Stroll, who, apart from crashing into his teammate very early on into the race, which could have gone very, very wrong for him. Yeah, he had a very good, solid race, considering all things considered with his broken bones. Uh, Lewis Hamilton then came fifth. Um, just ran out of pace. His tyres went off towards him. Could have got Carlos Sainz Jr., who came fourth. He was third for so much. But that Aston Martin of Fernando Alonso had so much pace and made it really easy to go past him. So he was on for his 99th podium. Fantastic result. Then, obviously, the two Red Bulls came one and two. And honestly, I think Max Verstappen could have won by a solid minute if he wanted to. In a league of his own. Um, yeah, Red Bull looked incredible. Their car looks rapid. They never looked in danger. They went for an aggressive strategy with a soft, soft, hard, both drivers. And yeah, they they battered everyone. I mean, uh, Perez was 38 seconds ahead of Alonso, who admittedly potentially could have been a bit more compared to had he not had a bump with Lance at the start and kind of bad quality. It is. For Aston Martin, let's make this a regular occurrence. What a performance from Fernando and from Lance. Let's see if they can get Races winning, so they're going to be up there. I think, you know, they, they looked faster than Mercedes. They looked a bit shake better than Ferrari. Speaking of Ferrari, the car just was not there. Even before the disaster for Charles, the car didn't look fast. So, yeah. And obviously, we've got a power unit bad. Uh, science of tyre dag issues just didn't look like it's that good. Um, if Ferrari still has tyre degradation problems in two weeks in Jeddah, they are in trouble. Mercedes, you're going to go to plan B. What a bad racing day. Even Toto Wolf said it. Um, yeah, they've got to go to plan B. But they just don't look right. Uh, for Alpha, they did well. They got the fastest lap with Joe Guan Yu in the race. Um, but he finished 16th. And you don't get a point for finishing fastest lap in 16th. It wasn't a nice race. Um for either really, but Valtteri Bottas had a good start. Alpine, there was no point in carrying on, because Ocon kept getting fucking penalties, but Gasly did really well. But yeah, obviously the retired card saved parts for Esteban, who had a pretty miserable day, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, he, he the stewards and Esteban and Ocon became very close friends. Uh, Alcon had three time points worth 20 seconds, I'm reading here. No. It was refreshing to see Williams back up there, they're a great team. See Logan Sargent do really well, he performed really well, and Albon obviously getting a point, he is a good driver. Um, it's really good to see Williams getting points on the first week. Um, Nick DeVries put a, you know, Yuki was only a few seconds off points for AlphaTauri. Um, Nick DeVries put in a solid disappointment point, but they're at the back of a the grid, he's done well. Uh, but unfortunately he got left out on a virtual safety car and was a sitting duck. Has they got no points? Hulkenberg suffered damage early on with while well, strategy cost Kevin Magnussen. If it didn't get the strategy out of K Magsan on the other tyre. Um yeah, weren't a great. They ended up free stopping, but they both had a free stop under VSE. No hard points. But I think they've got a decent car, and if the sand blows correctly for them, there are points for them. And McLaren had an unintended six stop strategy. Six stops! That's fucking ridiculous. So a disastrous day. And I think the less said about McLaren, the better. But all in all, exciting for the season, particularly in that midfield with Aston Martin, Mercedes, Ferrari. I think they're going to be the biggest, closest battle. I think Red Bull are going to win every race. George Russell said so himself. But yeah, <sighs> it is what it is. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I'll see you in two weeks. 
for as we go through the Jeddah Grand Prix in Saudi Arabia. Thanks for watching. I'm Shvav, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, see you later.